In this episode of IA Talks AI, we'll be hearing from Viscount Camrose, the Minister for Artificial Intelligence in the UK government. Minister, what a time to be alive. Uh, generative AI has certainly caught the imagination and we're seeing lots of different products and services being generated almost on a daily basis, uh, but also lots of risks are materialising uh, across uh, many different types of industries. Um, I can only imagine what it's been like for you though. I mean, what a time to be AI minister. Um, what would be your personal reflections on the, uh, your time in office so far? Um, and uh, perhaps you could give us some thoughts on some exciting use cases that you've seen. Sure. Um, well, I've, I've been in office now for about three months. And as you say, it's a really amazing time for AI. I mean, four months ago, I think, you, you know, only people really with a pre-existing strong interest in AI took any kind of interest in it at all. Uh, and now it's, it's very, very present as, as, uh, as, as a, a prominent topic of debate uh, pretty much every day. So it is indeed very exciting. I think one of the things that, that you know, I mean, that there are many, many emerging use cases and things that we haven't heard about yet that, that are going to come. But when I look at geospatial applications, I think that's right now particularly interesting um, and particularly high potential. I mean, uh, you know, imagine for land use, I mean, whether you're sitting as we are here in the middle of Westminster or in a very rural area, there's a lot of data points about the land around us that we're in, you know, whether it's traffic, pollution, um, daylight, uh, weather, temperature, and so on. And very quickly, under conventional technology, you, you, um, you hit a sort of data explosion and you just can't optimize for, for anything without, without breaking some barriers. Whereas, you know, with AI and its ability to crunch large numbers of data, we'll be able to find ways to optimize um, use of land, and that, after all, in the UK is is really a you know one of our defining scarcities. So to me, that's very exciting, not just from a business perspective, uh, but from a societal perspective too. Yeah, and very interesting from an investment perspective Indeed, in terms yeah. of uh, yeah. allocating resources. So you published the AI white paper just a few uh, short months ago, uh, but clearly things have moved on. Uh, in terms of AI usage and products and services, and that could be seen as maybe sort of 10 years almost uh, in AI time. How are you intending on making sure that the, the regulatory approach that you're putting forward remains relevant in six months' time, let alone, you know, six years' time? Yeah, I mean, I think, you, John, you put your finger on this is the defining challenge of any attempt to regulate AI. It's just a really fast-moving field. So I think any approach that says, right, we're going to identify use cases or applications that we don't like and ban those is doomed to failure because you're going to end up playing whack-a-mole by the time you shift your legislation around to banning the thing you don't like, 10 more things have come in their place. And that's why we really focused on an adaptive approach to, uh, to, to regulating AI that's based on, on a set of principles and outcomes that we want to achieve rather than a set of technologies and use cases that we want to stop. Yeah. See what I mean? And, and I think, you know, that's the approach we've got to continuously take going forwards and continuously adapt in this very, very fast moving environment. Um, so for investment management firms, we'll be most uh, affected by what the FCA does and how it applies those principles within the sector specific um, areas. How are you intending on sort of coordinating the activity of the various sectors uh, in financial services and beyond to make sure that the principles that you're seeking to apply and the outcomes you're seeking to achieve, um, you know, are consistently applied by those regulators? Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is the key point. Um, so let me briefly describe the kind of um, the architecture of, of how we intend to regulate it. So if you think of it as being in a series of layers uh, at the basic foundational layer is all of our existing regulators like the FCA and others and all of their existing regulations and those have to remain in place and, um, uh, and as solid as they have ever been. On top of that though we have a series of principles, uh, you, you know, robustness, safety, security, fairness, explainability, redress and so on. 
um, that cut across all AI applications. And those principles kind of guide us towards the outcomes that we want. And those on top of the principles sit this, this kind of centralized AI risk function. Um, and they will be looking at uh, scanning the horizon, looking for emerging risks, emerging opportunities. Um, and they'll be supported in that by this very interesting regulatory sandbox that we're putting in place to allow new technologies to be tested for regulatory purposes so that we can understand um, what the regulatory implications are of emerging technologies. And then crucially on top of all of this is a range of um, international engagements. And this is absolutely critical to the whole, uh, to the whole structure. And um, we engage bilaterally with, with all interested countries, great many of them, but we also engage with, with groups that are either exist already or are beginning to form in response to AI, because you know, we have to understand, of course, that, that you know, however good our approach to AI in the UK is, it has to make sense alongside everybody else's approach. And, uh, you know, we can provide genuine thought leadership in this space. And we, we, you know, we're very much open to other thought leadership as well. I think that's extremely relevant to our members because most of our members, um, uh, you know, have operations in other jurisdictions. They're not just UK focused. And they'll be following the debates, the very public debates in the US in particular around the regulation of AI. And then there's the EU AI Act, which has probably taken a bit more of a prescriptive approach yeah. rather than the principles approach that the UK is taking. So how do you think that's going to develop over the in the future? So you, you've said yeah. obviously you're collaborating, but well, what indeed. would be your and, prediction? And look, I think the, the easiest and best way to see this is that, that there are two kind of waves of AI that we're worrying about right now or we're engaged with right now. And one is this wave of, of wave of risks that we're seeing at the moment, risks and opportunities. Um, you know, disruption to existing working practices, the potential for mis and disinformation by AIs, the potential uh, for ease of creation of autonomous weapons, and so on. That, these are quite here and now and, and very much focus of, of existing thinking about regulation. But then there's the second wave, the so-called artificial general intelligence, the, the nascent super intelligence and the risk that we end up creating entities that are smarter than us, that have greater expertise than us in, in most areas. And that's another kind of wave of risk. And it's more theoretical and a little bit further out, although it's argued that these two waves are coming together. Um, and I think, you know, for both of those two waves, we really need to understand internationally, or we need to cooperate very effectively internationally, you know, particularly given the you know, potentially existential risks of that second wave of, of the AGI. It's in everybody's interests to collaborate widely and internationally around that. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll be very uh, interested in contributing to that debate. We'll be responding to your AI white paper consultation. Uh, but overall, have you got any central messages that you would like us to take back to the investment management community? Yeah, look, I, I think if I can offer uh, two bits of advice to, to anyone in the investment management or, or really in any business community, um, the first one is really think very carefully about the potential use cases that are coming from AI. Um, and if you can't see that many, I'd suggest think again because they're going to take us by surprise in some cases. And you know, look to see how you would adapt to that because it, you know, it is going to be creatively disruptive um, in in all walks of business life for a bit. But secondly, focus on skills. You, you know, a lot of the people in your organisations are going to need different skills. Um, there are a number of ways those skills can be provided: skills in data science, skills in other AI-related disciplines. There's a range of government scholarships and, and look into seeing if those make sense for, for your firm or any of the firms that you invest in. Um, but, but skills are going to be the, the key bridge for, from getting from, from where we are today to, to where we need to get to tomorrow. Fascinating. Thank you very much, Minister. Great.